Welcome to episode two of this coffee program. I'm still not sure what to call this. I actually just filmed the first episode. Now I'm filming the second episode. I'm hyped up on caffeine. It's still daylight out, so it's just how I roll. All right. So for the second episode, this is what we're going to review. We're kind of sticking to a theme, a slight progression. We're going to kind of progress everything that we can kind of follow along and see kind of how my thought press process works in terms of the coffee that I make. Speaking of which, the last episode we did the Ethiopian single origin, the Sadamu, Sadomu, however you want to pronounce that. Anyway, moving on to, oh, and the Kenyan dark roast coffee. Now, moving on to a little bit of a different direction, we're going to the light roast Kenyan coffee, which I have right here. And then over here we have the Dark Roast Colombian. Now I kind of touched on the Dark Roast Colombian on the last episode and how I kind of blend the uh, Dark Roast Kenyan and then the light Dark Roast, good night, let me back up, the Dark Roast Kenyan coffee and the Dark Roast Colombian coffee into the Dark Roast blend and the Tri blend. I also blend the light roast, the Kenyan light roast, and then the light roast Colombian together for the light roast blend. I actually have both of those bags right here. Just kidding. I don't. I just have the dark roast blend. So take the dark roast Colum the dark roast Kenyan, and then the dark roast Colombian, which I'm about to get to here in a second. Blend them evenly, and then get my dark roast blend. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this thing, shall we? So, first up is the light roast Kenyan coffee. Of course, as is tradition, get it everywhere on the table. So, as you can see, if you remember from the previous episode, you noticed that the dark roast Kenyan coffee was much darker than this one. This one is a little bit lighter. Kind of looks like a, again, a little darker, like an amber colored IPA. Now, initial right off the bat, it is a, uh, still has like a warm, like aroma to it, kind of like the Ethiopian did. However, it's much floral, it's much more brighter. It's kind of like in your face. Oh, wow. The first initial taste of that, I, I, I didn't really get any flavor. It's kind of just punching you in the mouth with brightness. It's very bright, but in a, like a really pleasing way. Not, not in an unpleasant way. It's not bitter. It's not uh, very acidic. That's really interesting. Well, I, I can't describe that flavor. It's good, though. I would say it's floral. There's some very, like, citrusy kind of flavors. Like, I'm not really sure. Like, just take a conglomerate of, like, lime, lemon, orange, mandarin orange, um... Kiwi, -y. very like bright and colorful, fruity, citrusy flavor. That's kind of how I describe it. It's very floral. So like if you can imagine what like like a lot of flowers smell like, that's kind of like what it tastes like. But mixed with citrus, it's very pleasing. It's not off-putting. It's not acidic. It's not bitter. It's actually really smooth, but with a nice punch of brightness to it. It's it's good. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad about it. It's very good. There's some very subtle tones or like flavors, I guess, of, uh, of, uh, I'm not really sure. Some subtle like caramel and milk chocolate even. I would say more milk chocolate, subtle milk chocolate tones, anything that's kind of more so on the finish, so you get the initial brightness, 
then it kind of moves into like uh, the citrusy floral fruity flavors and then you kind of get the finish the aftertaste of milk chocolate which I still can't put my finger on the uh, on the initial like the middle the middle palette the flavors I don't know it's hard to uh, describe so as this coffee cools it gets sweeter you start to notice more of the milk chocolate at the end into the the mid palate and then if, if, that, if that's even like the proper term so mid palate I don't even know like the middle you have the initial the initial flavor, then you have like kind of like the middle ground, and then you have the finish, like the aftertaste. So as it fin so as it cools off, you start to notice more of the darker, like chocolatey kind of flavors. The fruitiness is like at the very beginning, and then it goes away and instantly transitions to that, like that milk chocolate kind of flavor. So I'm gonna try it for the mug. It's a lot hotter. It's a lot warmer. It didn't cool off. That's just kind of there for you to see the color because you can't really see what I'm seeing from your perspective. This is a lot more subtle. If you watch the first episode, this is much more subtle in terms of fruity flavor or brightness or like that warm citrusy kind of flavor that I described the Ethiopian. It's much more subdued. It's not in your face. That initial, that initial like punch of brightness goes away very quickly. It's probably the first thing you notice, and after you take a couple sips, it kind of goes away. Very good. Like, mm. mm hmm. There is some earthiness to it. It's very bright, it's very floral to begin with, and then it kind of backs off a little bit. It's overall really good coffee. So, this is still the same bean, this is still the same coffee, it's the Kenny AA. This is just a light roast, it's not a dark roast. So it's going to be a little bit more subdued in terms of like your richer, darker, bolder flavors. It's not going to be as smoky if that's something you kind of pick up with darker roast coffees. Overall, it's a good coffee. I'd probably drink that every other every day, opposed to the dark roast. But then again, it's not blended. So that kind of leads me to the next one, which is the Colombian dark roast. So this is the other portion that makes up the uh, coffee here to my left. So, as we look into this, it's a little bit darker. It's not as dark as the uh, Kenyan. Again, I didn't mention this to begin with. Both of these coffees I brewed with a pour over. So, same as in the first episode, I used a pour over to brew these. Same method, same bean weight, I guess, in grams, same water amount, everything. So let's kind of just get like a comparison, I guess, of the two coffees in terms of color. So, they're, uh, I'd say they look about the same. The Colombian is much lighter. I can much more easily see it, see through it than the Kenyan. The Kenyan looks a little bit, I guess, lighter. Can't really pick that up on camera, but believe me, Colombian dark roast, it is much darker than the Kenyan light roast. Now, the initial like scent I guess off of this coffee is it's not like the Kenyan dark roasted it's not that like subtle punch in the mouth that you get it's not as bold it's very warm it's just coffee that make that coffee smell hmm it's a lot different a lot different than the dark roast Kenyan coffee the, the, the flavor is kind of, I don't know, I need another sip of that.
It starts off very floral and bright, and then you kind of pick up on other subtle flavors like caramel and chocolate, and then it kind of goes back into that floral flavor, which this is kind of how the, the Kenyan dark roast and this coffee, the Colombian dark roast, kind of balance each other out because the Kenyan coffee is very bold in terms of like dark chocolatey flavors. And then this, you kind of pick up a little bit more on the uh, floral flavors, I guess, the floral fruity flavors. So they kind of balance out, which is really nice, and they complement each other well. It's very smooth. You get a little bit more acidity on the finish. It's not bitter, though. It's definitely more notes of dark chocolate, kind of finishing with like a toffee kind of flavor, more so than the dark chocolate to milk chocolate that you got with the Dark Roast Kenyan. This is really good. Alone, I would more so drink this by itself, like as just, you know, the Dark Roast Colombian, more so than I would the Dark Roast Kenyan. You get like your less bright fruity flavors in this, so like I'd say more like, I don't know, is, are dates, raisins like fruit? They are. They're right? Yeah. So I get more like flavors of like raisins or dates in this, which kind of balances out, again, balances out well or complements. I would use complements well. You can't really have like a balanced and complex coffee. That makes no sense. Um, it complements the Kenyan dark roast much better, or really well, I should say, because of the flavor. You get a dark, chocolatey kind of those tones, and then you get also get some brightness and some floral chocolate with the, I guess, warmer or darker fruit tones, like dates. Apologize for that. As I mentioned in the first episode, my camera likes to cut out and stop recording for some reason. Uh, I thought it was the memory card. That seems to have only fixed it temporarily as it cuts out at about 12 minutes. So, kind of annoying. Apologize. Anyways, back to where I was with the Colombian Dark Roast Coffee. So, yeah. Compliments the Dark Roast Canyon very well. As it cools, it sweetens up a lot. Like, much more than that. Like, it sweetens up a lot. But the, like, date and, like, warmer floral flavors stick around. They don't go away. They stick around. It just gets sweeter. Ooh, and the chocolate flavors. The, the darker and milk chocolatey flavors kind of come out a little bit more as it cools. And then you kind of get the bitterness of it. There's a little bit of bitterness on, like, the tail end of it that you start to pick up as it cools, but... Yeah, definitely there, that bitterness is very subtle. It's not like in your face, like where you don't want to drink anymore. It is there though. It's good. Yeah, definitely raisin, date, dates flavor, raisin, um, plum even. I'm not really sure what plums taste like, so I shouldn't say that. Some floral, some very like milk chocolate like flavors as it cools. Definitely the kind of like floral fruitiness kind of goes away. Or floralness, the bright floralness I should say goes away. And you pick up more of like milk chocolate, um, date. Those are like the two big like flavor tones that I kind of, or flavors I guess, that I notice as it cools down a little bit. So going back to the uh, warmer coffee, I guess, on the, on the uh, from out of the mug, very, uh, yeah, get that initial hit of brightness and it kind of mixes in with the uh, chocolatey flavors 
and kind of then that smooth finish. Oh wow. That's good. Yeah, like I said earlier, I can't fucking tell if my camera is recording. So if I'm like looking weird into the screen, it's because I'm trying to tell if my camera's recording. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier, I would definitely drink the Dark Roast Colombian by itself more so than the Dark Roast Canyon. But then again, it's all based on your flavor, like what you like in terms of coffee or flavor or your palate, I guess. I would say that just to give you an idea of like what I like, I like darker beers. Uh, I like stouts more so than porters. I like IPAs a lot. IPAs are probably my favorite and I like the wide range that IPAs have. So that kind of gives you an idea of more so like what I like. So I'm going to tend to drink more medium to darker roast coffees. I'm going to tend to like those more than what I would lighter roast coffees. Which kind of explains because I only have one light roast coffee. Out of all my things, everything else is like the the Costa Rican, so medium roast, Ethiopian's a medium roast, tri blend, dark roast, obviously, dark roast blend, obviously, dark roast, and then light roast. So that, I guess, reflects kind of like what I like. So, this is, which I don't think I explained, the Colombian dark roast coffee is a. Oh, that's cool. I could have done that. Um, Colombian Dark Roast Coffee, it is a Colombian Supremo, which I actually had at a coffee shop in Idaho, quarterly in Idaho if you're ever there. Um, strangely enough, it's called Evan, Evans Brothers Coffee Roasters, I believe. Roasters? Evans Brothers Roasters, I think that's what it is called. Look it up on Instagram or Google, Facebook, whatever you happen to prefer. Strangely enough, my name is Evan. Not Evans. Um, but anyways, I had one there and it's very... It tasted just like that, strangely enough. So I can actually like pick up on some of the flavors that I noticed, which there is a subtleness. There is a subtle flavor, like hint of like melon, like honeydew, or like cantaloupe. Like if you mix those two, one of those two, I'd say cantaloupe. Yeah. There's like a subtle hint of like melon in that. Like a circus of melons? I don't know. Like threw a bunch of melons into a blender. That's what you'd get. There's a very subtle hint of that. Then again, this is a dark roast. It's not medium. I'm sure when I get to the light roast, that's something I'll pick up on is the melon in the Colombian coffee. Anyways, this is a Colombian Supremo Julia. I believe. Julia. H-U-I-L-A. Good night. Apologize. This is going to be the second cut on the second episode. Two cuts and two episodes. Hopefully it doesn't like have a trend throughout. My battery on the camera just died. It's my fault. Anyway, hint of melon. So yes, light roast. Anyways, Colombian Supremo Julia. H-U-I-L-A. Now, the light roast of that is going to have a little bit more melon flavor to it. Or light medium roast. Columbia Helio. Julia, however you pronounce that, let me know if I'm pronouncing that wrong, because I probably am. Oh, uh, so. Mm, definitely notice the Colombian Julia. Or, not good night, crap, that's the name of the coffee. The melon flavor that you get in that coffee. Now, I had that at that coffee shop. It was really good. A little watered down, you could tell they probably used too much water, which is something that you have to kind of like play around with yourself. You use a little bit less water, you use a little bit more water, depending on what your palate is, how you like your coffee. So I will link both of these coffees at places you can buy them if you would like to try them individually, or if you kind of have an idea of what you like, take the information I gave you on the first episode with the Dark Roast Kenyan Coffee, and then the information I just gave you on the Colombian Dark Roast Coffee, and try it for yourself. Try this coffee, my dark roast blend, see if you can pick out some of the flavors that I described. Because I know on each of the uh, little notes, the little letters that I send all of you who purchase my coffee, which I appreciate your support and your orders, 
see if you can pick out some of the flavors in this coffee, and then imagine I have a bag of light roast blend coffee here. See if you can pick out some of the flavors that I just described in these two episodes. Comment below if you can pick out some of them. Let me know if you pick out any other flavors that you notice that maybe I don't mention or haven't mentioned in the past. And then, let's have a question of the day. Question of the episode, I guess. Let's end with a question. What coffee would you like to see me review on future episodes? Let me know. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate your eyes, your ears, listening to me, watching me in these long, drawn-out episodes. If you watch this far, thank you. Please like and share this with your friends, your family, your math teacher, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, your grandmother, mother, dad, grandfather. Friends, anyone you want to share this with or anyone who loves coffee, share this with them. Thank you. Appreciate you. I will see you on the next episode.